I'm here talking to Vili Furi, a physical therapist from South Africa, who has given a really interesting talk on the myofascial implications of breast cancer surgery. Uh, so he's going to tell us a bit about his findings as a physical therapist in dealing with these patients. So I understand that you find quite a bit of myofascial effect from breast surgery on your patients. Yes. Breast surgery is quite an extensive surgery that involves most of the myofascial and fascial structures either directly through surgery or indirectly through restrictions that form within fascial layers and fascial systems. Do you find that the physicians are aware of this effect in their patients? I don't think they're fully aware of the effect of this. They are fully aware of the structures that they need to work on, but the functional implications of what they are doing, I don't think fully comes through in their understanding of the post-surgery and post-treatment time and period that a woman has to go through. What kinds of uh, myofascial effects have you seen in, in uh, breast cancer surgery patients that you have treated? The most common effect is what I see on the area of the chest wall where the actual surgery was done. So we're talking about the surgical scar area, which leads to surgical restrictions. We're also talking about the areas that are affected by the resection of the breast, the breast material, the axillary tail of the breast, and obviously then the lymphatic clearance into the axilla. That leaves another area of extensive scarring. The third area that I often see and sometimes more commonly see as a problem afterwards are the drain sites because the drain sites are normally not really cared for, for so, so seriously by the surgeon as what he cares for the wound. Do you mean the lymphatic drainage? Is that no, no. After surgery you have the drain in oh, to yes. drain the surgery, right. to drain old blood from the system. Now those scars, because that drain gets pulled out and it often leaves you with an excessive little bit of scarring between two or three tissue layers, whereas your surgeon when he closes the wound, closes it in layers. So often I find in my surgical practice or in my rehabilitation period, that that area needs to more restriction than the mm -hmm. actual surgery, surgical scar itself. Is this because the fascial layers that stick together because they haven't been dealt with separately? Yes, separate layers stick together because when you look at what we've got, if I move this system, like in moving my newspaper, the tissue layers glide on top of each other. But if I've had my 10-year-old sitting eating his peanut butter sandwich between page two and page three and he's got a blob there and when I come back tomorrow and I want to, do, to get to page three, page three is stuck and that leads to the fascial tightness that we see as dysfunction on movement. And would that not, wouldn't that also happen uh, even though the surgeon is uh, thinking about layers and closing up the layers uh, uh, one at a time. Would that sticking still not happen between those layers just because of the trauma of the surgery? The trauma of the surgery does a couple of things. First of all, it cuts out. Now, I've got to be more specific. Your modified radical mastectomy is one form of surgery. Then you've got the newer approach towards um, lumpectomies and tissue preserving procedures and also where they do minimal surgery. Now let us start with the mastectomy side first because even though the doctors are saying less modified radical mastectomies are being done, I still see quite a few of my patients where the modified radical has been the preferred surgery not only by the, patient, by the surgeon, but sometimes the patient insists and says, Doctor, if you're going to take this off, take it all, I'm not coming back. So let's talk about the 
modified radical first. The modified radical surgery is radical because it takes out all the breast material on top of the pectoralis major um, muscle with the fascia that is on top of the pectoralis major. Now the pectoralis major fascia is very closely related to the muscle itself, almost as though it constitutes that muscle's epimysium. Now then we cut out that entire fascia plus the breast material, which is a, a structure of your superficial gliding fascia, plus the fascia behind pectoralis major, which is where there are two very important little lymph nodes situated that need to be removed as well, plus sometimes part of the clavipectoral fascia, which surrounds pectoralis minor. Some surgeons may even take pet minor out as well. Now that is quite extensive surgery. So that is all taken out as a block. Sent for histology and for testing, and the surgeon then closes up, puts drains in, and asks the patient to start moving. Now the difficulty is, the moving pulls on surgical scarring on that level. I've taken out a whole area of fatty tissue from the axilla, which is left with, you can almost say, a hole that also heals with scarring. So I'm stuck with a second layer of scarring in the connective tissue of my axilla. The third layer of tightness then is also, because part of a modified radical mastectomy is to try and get as little free space as possible behind the skin or under the skin. So some surgeons may suture the skin to the pectoralis major. And that is quite an important thing because that stops unnecessary accumulation of fluids that need to be drained continuously sometimes for three to six months afterwards.